Uh, uh, I can go ahead. Oh. Good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, welcome. And this is our MyFest task party. And what is a task party? Well, before we get into the party, let's learn a little bit of background. So our session agenda for today is that um, we're going to we're going to give you this introduction and some time to gather materials and then we will um, look at these three cycles. So we'll be engaging in the party um, in, in in three different um, cycles or uh, or uh, sessions. So the first one is coded red and the theme for that is nature the second one is coded purple and the theme for that is community or connection and the third one is coded green and the theme for that is future and then we'll have 34 to 50 minutes of small group discussion and 56 50 to 60 minutes of whole group reflection and since we are a smaller group we may kind of collapse those as well All right, so introduction. Um, so as we think about uh, what leads us to task party um, in the history of art at the end of modernism, you know, we talk about something being modern uh, in vernacular language, and we're often talking about something that's now, but in art, when we say something is modern, we're referring to a specific historical period, uh, period of modernism, which most art historians agree in somewhere around 1960. And in this space of the 60s and 70s, um, as modernism um, kind of is winding down, um, there are lots of different sort of things that are emerging in the art world, including the emergence of conceptual art. And within the context of conceptual art, we have things like happenings or other um, performance pieces happening. And then we also have things like instructions as art. And so a great example here is a piece by John Baldessari, I will not make any more boring art that he made in 1971. And on the other side here, you'll see one of my favorites. Uh, this is one of my favorite artists, um, Sola Witt. I talk about Sola Witt a lot in terms of thinking about curriculum because Sola Witt's work is not actually an executed piece. If a museum or gallery acquires a work of Solowit, what you're actually acquiring are the instructions for the piece. And anyone with the technical knowledge of how to execute the piece can execute it. And so, um, so effectively, the work of art are the instructions rather than the finished product. All right, and that's what that's what you'd see as the finished product. But this is not, in fact. So this is what we get to look at, but it's not actually the work of art, which I think is often confusing, but, it, but it's nice to be able to see instructions on the back end and understand that in relationship to things like curriculum. So we might write a plan for our students or we, we might have a, an idea of what we wanna do for learning and the things, the tangible outcomes that we see that each of the students produce are not in fact the curriculum, right? They're the result of engaging with the process. So um, this is kind of shifting the idea of an artwork being that set of instructions rather than what happens afterward. So it's kind of making something transparent that was never transparent before too. So before this point in society, a lot of that stuff is, is not very legible. So what is happening on the back end of, of what artists do isn't necessarily clear. So artists like Baldessari and Sola Wimp are making those more transparent. Um, all right, so along with that, and uh, here's another one of my favorites. I brought this. I brought this deck of cards to Thea's office, and I treasure mm -hmm. them. I have a. I have my own physical set of of oblique strategies. If you're interested in learning more about oblique strategies, you can access digital cards online, um, or you can you can order. A, a physical set, um, but they're useful for lots of things. The original intent though, by they're designed by Brian Eno and the artist Peter Schmidt um, to help us kind of work through studio dilemmas. So if we hit a wall, so to speak, in the studio, you draw a card at random. 
And so here's an example. The most important thing is the thing most easily forgotten. So this is a provocation that helps us sort through or reframe what's happening in the studio. If we've, if we've sort of hit a stopping point, perhaps this provocation would give us an opportunity to think about this. So what did we, what was the obvious thing that we, that we forgot about here, right? And that, you know, and here's another one, give way to your worst impulse. So sometimes that might mean, you know what, I hit a wall here and my worst impulse is to start over. So maybe you do. Maybe this is permission to start over, or maybe it's permission to do something you think, oh, that's completely breaking the rules, but I'll do it anyway because I drew this card, right? So um, again, constraints promote creativity. And one of the important parts as we think about the task party is that um, a lot of conceptual artists like the uh, living artist Sophie Call um, build a lot of the work that they do around creating rules or constraints. And that by creating constraints, we're not left with this ambiguous infinitesimal field of creativity, right? So we, if, by creating some constraints, we can really push boundaries because there are known boundaries. We, if, we create if we create boundaries for ourselves or we create boundaries for co-learners, um, it, it actually can, um, it can, provide that space for creativity to happen because there's not the blank page syndrome, right? Or the blank canvas syndrome that, that, that we have a starting point. Oh, I'll take over. So one of my um, favorite books is by uh, Tom Kelly uh, from IDEO. Uh, and he's a, he's a designer. Uh, so creative confidence. And in that book, he says, uh, constraints can spur creativity and incite action as long as you have the confidence to embrace them. And I saw this in action in one of my engineering classes. Um, I had an activity that just started with the simple instructions, build me a duck. And I was handed a um, little raft, like a paper raft of Legos. And so we built a duck, my team and I built a duck and we decided that we didn't need all of the Legos that were given to us. We, were, we, we thought, oh, we could do this more efficiently. So we built a, uh, a minimal duck. I'd seen others actually use their extra pieces to create um, what they considered like an egg <laughs> or a larger duck or a, um, et cetera. So I, I gave this to my students as well, the same set of you know, Lego pieces and the instructions, build me a duck. And what I love from that is that I, um, they, created so many different pieces with, this, with the same um, materials. And some of them decide, re realized that there were no rules about um, the, how the team should be formed. So even though I plopped a, a set of materials in front of one team, they thought, oh, well, if we pool our materials, we can actually create a thicker duck. So they made a, a fat duck. They also made a um, what they called an admiral duck. <laughs> so they created a very large team, pooled their resources and created a, a duck and a boat for that duck. I also said, oh, well, I don't have, um, I don't have the particular Lego piece that has this eye. So I'll give you a marker and the teams can share, uh, can pass a marker around to make an eye on their duck. And even though I, I didn't say specifically that the marker could only be used for the eye. So you can see also that some of the teams created um, some very interesting patterns on their pieces. So this was just a collection of, based on these very sim uh, simple instructions, the kind of create and, and the constraints of these are the, the materials that you've been given, you can see the ver variety in creativity. And so this brings us to Oliver Herring, who actually his, his first task party was about 20 years ago. So 2002, uh, I believe it was in October. Um, and he has a very simple framework for this creative action and using instructions as art. Um, and I, I really like this quote from him, part of the value of task is not to invest into anything permanent, to really celebrate the moment, the fluidity of creative action. 
So some of uh, the beauty of task parties are because it's just a, a kind of a drop in the bucket. Um, it's very freeing. We don't have to create something that is a perfect piece of art. It's just celebrating um, our creative uh, our creative juices together. And the task party rules that he created are very simple. So one is just pick a task from the task pool, do the task however you interpret it, um, and then write a new task and submit it to the task pool. And I also wanted to um, frame this in, in terms of the art of gathering. So this is um, this is from Priya Parker. Uh, these are, I, I think of task party rules as kind of these pop-up rules where we are asked to play with our, our creative boundaries. But I also, in looking at some of the previous tasks that uh, people did not do, there's a, there's a collection on um, the task party website of, um, of remainder tasks. And some of them feel like their boundaries are a little bit, um, you know, it, it's, it might be uncomfortable for some people to engage in it. Um, and so I also wanted to introduce this idea of um, being gracious and being respectful. And the best uh, example that I, that I can give is from Priya Parker's kind of um, making sure that people understand um, how, to, how to behave respectfully, essentially. Um, and I, I really like this quote from her, which is, whereas etiquette allows for people to gather because they've been raised with the same silent codes and norms, pop-up rules allow people to gather because they are different yet open to having the same experience. They allow us to make meaning together without having to be the same. And so for this task party, um, I wanted to invite a few community rules, specifically that um, everything is an invitation. You don't have to do the task if you don't feel like it. Um, you don't have to interact with other people as part of the task. Um, and then also be considerate of yourself and others and assume good intentions but also state your preferences. So if somebody is in your space or asking you to uh, do something that you're not comfortable with, um, then just don't assume that it's out of any uh, malevolence, but just uh, you know, generously state your boundaries, okay? Um, and then I wanted to give a, a little bit of time for people to gather materials. What we found is um, some very helpful things are a way to capture and share photos. Um, so a smartphone or web camera will do. Uh, scrap paper or paper, uh, writing implements, so that can be a pen, paper, or markers. Um, some other things that might be nice are scissors or tape. Um, and then there's a few nice to have, especially if you're um, interested in making more complicated art, but it's, it's definitely not necessary. So markers, cardboard, old magazines, scrap fabric, string, popsicle sticks, popsicle stick straws, or aluminum foil. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and um, open up the task. Sorry, give me one moment. I'll put the task party tablet in the chat for people to go into. Um, and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a technical walk through there. Okay. So for this, I have some instructions just on the very left side. So um, we'll go for our first round of the, uh, our first round theme is nature. Um, and again, the instructions for each round are just to select a task, do the task or create your art, and then create a post. And on Padlet, you can do that just by double clicking anywhere, and then you can submit. Um, Padlet also has a draw option. So if you go to the, the three dots, you can draw directly in Padlet. Uh, 
um, and then save that if you'd like, but I'm gonna close that. And then you can make a connection to your creation for, uh, from the task to your creation and label the connection with your name or nickname. I have here on Padlet that um, your name will appear at the, uh, whoever created the post will, um, their name will appear. But if you sign in, um, you don't have to create a, a login for to access this Padlet. Um, you might wind up becoming anonymous, uh, but if you would prefer not to put your, your true name uh, or your legal name, um, then uh, please just have a tag to label the connections and I'll show that. So if I use this task, if I select this task, and this is the creation that I have, find something that usually scares others but delights you, and I found a picture of a spider web, <laughs> what I can do is I can connect to a post. And when I connect, I would write the label to show that I, this task led to the, um, uh, a particular uh, creation. Okay. And then you write a new task for the next round. For round two, we'll have community or connection. And um, we will, and, and then you will similarly draw a connection. So again, connect to a post, and then you connect to the task that you created. Okay. Um, further down, I have some more resources about task parties if you'd like to learn more about them. Um, and then there's a few tools for creating online art. Okay, so with that, let me just monitor the chat. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. Uh, we have uh, eight minutes for each round, and then we'll go into uh, breakout rooms. Okay, so I'll stop my share now and pause the recording. I'm recording. So I wanted to go ahead and um, just give a quick look at our huge amount of artwork that we produce in just a few short minutes. Um, and then I wanted to go through a few discussion prompts. So um, I would put everybody in breakout rooms and ask um, your, uh, your group to give each other a tour of your creative pathways. What sparked your interest? What art did you create as a result? And what task um, did you, was uh, inspired by what you made? Um, and I also wanted to ask, so um, a lot of us at MyFest are educators and instructional designers. So how did this activity change your perspective about creating and giving instruction? Um, other prompts that I was wondering were, um, what properties or attributes made you feel comfortable or at ease when completing a task? What properties or attributes made you feel like you were making something creative and were these the same or different? And then finally, how do you envision incorporating elements of what we did today into future learning experiences for others? So a lot to think about. Um, and so I'll invite uh, anybody to go ahead and, and volunteer uh, and I can um, stop my share or actually I can, um, go through, uh, put up the my fest tap, the Padlet and see if um, you can kind of help steer, okay? So I have a funny one to share. Um, the prompt about finding repeating patterns really appealed to me partly because of reading Adrienne Marie Brown and talking about that fractals. And also because during this session, I was walking around and there were these palm trees and I kept like, I want an activity for me to take photos of these palm trees. <laughs> and so for the repeating, what was really funny is I was walking for exercise and I was slowing down to do these things. And then for this one, when I realized it, I ran to get to, <laughs> to that. So it was very funny how it changed my exercise pattern. <laughs> so um so that was interesting um 
I like that it made me sort of both try to notice things around me and it made me think that maybe I'd like in my own teaching to to have students you know come to class talk about a theme and then go out around campus or even outside campus and notice things maybe throughout a day not necessarily all synchronously or maybe during class time and that it might make people just sort of reflect beyond what they would normally do every day as they pass by something you know? I love that it's it's funny too that we both chose we found repeating patterns in plants so I have a mother of hundreds cactus that I recently got and it's got um, these leaves and on each leaf there's a mini cactus on it they, they had like it's all of these little buds um, so I thought of that as um, as the repeating pattern so I love having our two pieces together. I love that too. Would anybody else like to share some of the uh, some of the pathways that they had? I think I went completely off task. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but when I saw the word nature, for some reason, I remembered the song about uh, called What a Wonderful World. Um, <laughs> I love that song. Actually, my whole family does. So I just linked that to the photo of nature, which is kind of linked to the flowers one, uh -huh. uh, yellow flowers. I just feel that when it comes to nature, the colors yellow and green and blue are very relaxing. And I came to discover recently that those are the colors they actually use in hospitals as well. I mean, surgeons wear green or blue or any of those colors to calm the patients down as well. So I found that beautiful, to be honest. Oh, and I, I love how the idea of um, the colors and the effect that they have, that also goes into how they're used in the community, right? So I think as you were um, doing your task and thinking about nature, you're already starting to tie it into the next round, right? Yes, so true. They're interconnected in a way. I think one of the things that I thought was really interesting about this Padlet, like the application itself, um, is seeing how um, different people are making connections in different directions and um, where I think the, the things that I was doing, I would connect linearly and then collect another task. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I realized that I would make a task and then I didn't really, I, I, I didn't think about how my task one completed work related to the next task I selected. And so there were, I, I, for whatever reason, there are just not those links. And then I'm realizing other people are util utilizing the connecting points differently, which for me as a neurodiverse person um, was really exciting to be able to, uh, to, to visualize different thinking patterns and what that might mean for us as we design um, different learning environments. So where and when we could make thinking patterns evident to um, people who um, think in, a, in, a, in an array of ways that might be really useful for um, helping folks, you know, kind of understand how their thinking aligns or does not align in a really kind of like literal legible mm -hmm. path or, 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 you know, multiple paths or things like that. Or seeing where they're like in this case, like where there were disconnections. So it wasn't that I, wasn't that the artwork that I made in task one had nothing to do with the next thing I selected. Um, I just thought about like connecting the artwork and then how that suggested a topic for task two, but then I didn't also make a connection from the artwork to the next task I selected by another person. And I think that that would have been valuable. I realized other people did that. And for whatever reason, it didn't click. And then I couldn't figure out how to put my name in the link. <laughs> um so there like you can kind of tell that things are connected but then i didn't i don't have my name in the arrow because i didn't i couldn't figure that out and i didn't want to waste time trying to figure out 
I don't want to waste valuable creative time trying to figure out how to put my name in the link. Yeah. That is that was oh. my, that was my take on this too. Is that it went for me too fast to create things, but I love this use of a Padlet, and I think if people have more time to explore the Padlet and think about exactly those kinds of things that Lillian was talking about, amazing things could happen in the Padlet too. But those are things that are harder to have happen yeah. fast. So I like the idea that you know there's the Padlet, and I can come back later this afternoon and and explore it more at leisure because this is I love Padlets, and I never thought about using it like this. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Well, well, to add to that really quickly, Laura, before I before I forget it, and then I promise I'll, I'm going to pass the baton. Um, that uh, there's some really interesting potential for this in asynchronous. If you if, if you're able to return to it, so instead of saying that we have an hour, what if we had 24 hours? And then also um, along the same, you know, like in thinking through um, kind of what is legible. Yeah, I, I, again. Yeah, 24 hours, right? So, you know, one of the things thinking about how we would adapt this is like thinking about how how um, how different modalities might affect it. So, like, how much of it is live and how much of it is um, choose your own, you know, like do this independently. Um, but then also, um, you know, how uh, how it might um, like what do you do with it later? So, if if and how you return to it, um, what what kind of conversations could come out of it mm -hmm. depending on how you you know like how how you bounded the time but but you know i think there's some great comments too about thinking about the material we'll say the last time we did something like this for the um engineering for peace conference i was determined to do some pretty serious drawing and and building so and i it was just like caught up in physical materials and i uh i, I totally abandoned ship on that this time and and went fully digital and it felt a little less chaotic and it didn't feel less creative i thought i might feel like i was cheating but it didn't feel like cheating at all that's really great to hear because one of the things that i worry about is how this feels if it's digital versus if it's physical and is there any any kind of loss when it's um when it's fully digital like this. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to also to plug because we've been talking a little bit in the chat about Daily Create. Um, and so that would be a great way to see the connections. We've been using uh, at MyFest the, the Slack channel um, to curate the Daily Create, as well as the, the Daily Create. I think there's a Twitter option too to point. Uh, oh, there are Twitter, Twitterati. Um, to kind of connect daily creates to the creations. But this is kind of a neat way to show how the act of making art um, fuels the tasks or the ideas to um, prompt others to create art, right? Okay. All right, this is such great, um, such great discussion. Um, so again, it's a little bit after two. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I will stop share and pause the recording.